Hi class, today we're going to talk about independence from chapter 4. So Latin American struggles for independence came very unexpectedly and later it creates a dozen constitutional republics and they will become countries later on. Winning the independence required everybody to get together as one, including the African slaves, the Indian villager, the landowner, and the mestizo. Mestizos are half Spanish and half uh, Indian. So they had to put them all together and we will see that later on they go under the umbrella of nativism. In Haiti, the bottom of the slaves rose up and took over. So the revolution was from uh, bottom to top. And the rest of Latin America, the white people or the Europeans stayed at the top and the blacks and the indigenous people stayed at the bottom even after independence. The patriotic vision of the wars of independence introduced two elements that you'll see recurring, these two ideas of liberalism and nationalism that will be present in the Latin American society. Revolution and war in Europe. Uh, Spanish America experienced bad ruling for decades after 1788 under the King Carlos IV, who put a prime minister to govern for him, and this prime minister was a bad administrator. Carlos IV was interested in collecting clocks and hunting, and he was not interested at all in ruling. So he puts a prime minister to do the job, but this prime minister was a bad uh, administrator. So the misrule and all these expensive wars that Spain had made the state go bankrupt. And the bankruptcy led the crown to uh, higher tax to raise the taxes, higher taxes, as well as the sale of higher positions of command. So they sold the positions, and there were a lot of incompetent people in the high office. So this is a portrait of La Familia de Carlos IV by Francisco de Goya, the family of Carlos IV. And this is the Prime Minister Manuel Godoy. In the painting here, Francisco de Goya is right here. He's the painter making the portrait of the family. He was a royal uh, painter. And here he makes a statement here by showing Carlos IV far away from his queen, Maria Luisa de Parma. They didn't have a good relationship. And apparently in the history books, they say that Maria Luisa had an affair with Manuel Godoy, who was half of his, half of her age and um, a lot younger. And she's the one who convinced the king to put him as a prime minister. And here you see the children. And here you will see Carl, uh, Fernando VII, who will become king after Carlos IV. So there's all this uh, dysfunctional family. And during that time, they're also facing bankruptcy and not doing well as a, as a kingdom in Spain. There was war with England beginning in 1796 that lasted for 10 years. Uh, the Spanish Atlantic sailings uh, slowed down the colonial trade because there were a lot more, uh, less sailings. In 1808, Napoleon invades Spain and imprisons its king, Carlos IV, who kind of abdicated his throne to Fernando VII, his son. The French revolutionaries of the 1790s, uh, they challenged the idea of monarchy uh, based on divine right, and they executed the French king and the queen, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. They were decapitated. The French Revolution as you can see here in the painting, uh, created 
a lot of inspiration and influence other parts of the world to revolt against the divine right and uh, inspire many revolutions, including the one in the Spanish Americas. The revolutionaries took inspiration from the intellectual awakening called Enlightenment. They proclaimed liberty, equality, and fraternity, questioning traditional authority. They argued for popular sovereignty, that people of each nation had the right to determine who should rule uh, under a written constitution. This ideology uh, came to justify military aggression uh, from the French uh, that led by General Napoleon Bonaparte, he began liberating, according to him, liberating other countries into French control. And Spain and Portugal were two of these countries, so France invades Spain and Portugal. This is a painting of Napoleon Bonaparte. And the new political ideology of liberty and liberalism um, was, they say, as much English as French in origin. And the English monarchy had elected legislature, House of Commons, which um, liberals consider as the voice of the people. England opposed the French Revolution and led the fight against uh, Napoleon's expansion. England, Spain, and Portugal joined forces against France. So it's kind of ironic how England was an enemy of Spain before. Now England becomes an ally to fight against the French. These revolutions triggers many independence movements in Latin America under the ideology of pop, popular sovereignty. In 1807, Napoleon invaded Portugal. So the Portuguese king flees with his entourage of 10,000 people, including nobles, government officials, servants, and the royal treasury to Brazil. He uh, is Prince Joao, and he made his court in Rio de Janeiro for more than a decade, and he really loved Brazil, actually. Carlos IV and their Prince Fernando, uh, they fell into the hands of Napoleon, and they both resigned their claims to the Spanish throne. Napoleon's brother Joseph becomes Jose I, uh, King of Spain from 1808 to 1813, but it wasn't very peaceful times. Um, there was a lot of revolt, and the Spanish were fighting guerrillas to get Jose the First out of Spain. Brazilian trade was channeled to Portugal before, but now that King Joao was in Brazil, Brazilians were allowed to trade with everybody and the imported goods became less expensive, making it a better uh, economy for Brazil. And also Joao really liked Brazil. So this is Jose Bonaparte, King of Spain from 1808 to 1813. And this is King Joao, uh, the King of Portugal. Uh, the anti-Napoleonic patriots in Portugal and Spain were fighting guerrillas that went for years and they were supported by the English troops. In Spanish America, there was a lot of revolting fights that were recurring um, from time to time. And Brazil remained peaceful. Uh, Joao was so happy that even when Napoleon was defeated in the Battle of Waterloo in 1805, he did not hurry back to Lisbon, Portugal. The Spanish Americas between 1808 and 1815 was very different from Brazil. They had a lot of revolts, uh, independence movements um, that won't be as peaceful as it was in Brazil for a while. Spain sent representatives to a national resistance committee called Central, Central Junta uh, to support the Spanish, to get the support of the Spanish Americas but people in the Spanish Americas rejected it. Spanish Americans were loyal to the King Fernando VII, 
but they wanted their own American kingdoms. So they wanted two pillars, the Spanish kingdom and Latin American uh, kingdom under the same king. They began forming their own juntas, which were called Cabildo Abierto, and they wanted to rule locally under the king's name and often held the meetings in a town council. So it was called Cabildo Abierto. By 1810, the resistance to French occupation has been pushed all the way to the south, to the city of Cadiz in Spain. And here's a picture of Cabildo Abierto, where the Creoles, who were the European descent born in America, will get together and discuss their future and their um, political plans. The Constitution of Cadiz in Spain from 18, was written in 1812, and they say that it was a liberal document, and if it was implemented, it would have affected the Spanish Empire. But it was never, never fully implemented, and one of the first decrees that uh, King Fernando VII um, gave out at, when he became king was to null the Constitution of 1812. By the time it was completed, patriots were rebelling in Mexico, Venezuela, Argentina, and uh, elsewhere. So there were a lot of revolts happening all over Latin America, and we'll learn in more detail in the next few videos. So that's it for now. See you guys later. Bye.